Welcome back everyone. This week on Tattoo Collectibles, we've got a couple things in the mail that we are super excited about. We told you about them last week, we're gonna show you this week. This week, uh, the return of the Tattoo Historian. Uh, uh, many of you have mentioned that you'd like to see the return of that. So this week we're gonna do that. But now, this. What's in the mail? All right, so what's in the mail? What's in the mail this week? Well, I'll tell you, I found a new outlet for some stuff this week, and it was one that kind of shocked me, although it probably shouldn't have. I, a buddy of mine was like, uh, well, you're always looking for this tattoo stuff. Um, have you been on Etsy? As I'm sure with many of you out there, like me, uh, we thought Etsy was just for handmade stuff. Come to find out, it is also for vintage items. Uh, that's nice, they included a little handmade uh, handmade card. Who is this from? This is from Calamity Jane's, um, Calamity Jane's Tattoo and Piercing. We got another card. I love it when they send me these. These are, uh, like I said, the, you know, like I always say, these are the low hanging fruit. These are the, the uh, collectible, uh, the entry level collectibles. So, we got a nice card with that. So anyway, I'm, I get off track with, uh, with nice uh, handwritten notes. So, back to what I was saying. I get so excited about this stuff. This, I see it as you see it, so. So I didn't realize that on Etsy that you could get vintage items as well. I typed in vintage tattoo in there and a bevy of things came up. To include a bunch of like modern, woo, that's a squeaky one. To include a bunch of modern day flash done by artists from today. Uh, they're selling some really nice, um, really nice stuff uh, on there and on their big cartel uh, um, sites. These I got, um, I just thought these were neat and oh, they, they even got the thing on the back. So these are two business cards. This one is from East Coast Tattoo, and it's got this really nice graphic on the back, too. I'll, I'll give you pictures of both of those. And then this one is from Route 66. I didn't have a Brian Everett card, and I've always wanted one. Well, I've, I've, wanted, I've, I've always wanted one, but I've really wanted one since I went to the Tuttle uh, 70th. As I'm walking through, I've got a... I've got a, uh, a roll under my arm uh, to put, uh, you know, like a like a postage tube under my arm to, to stick the collectibles in. Because anytime you go to an event like that, take something that you can definitely store them in. And that's what I, I had done. I, I had grabbed one. And as I'm walking through this event, I hear, hey, brother. And I, I keep on walking because, you know, I'm, I'm in San Francisco. I don't know anybody there. And I hear it again, and I turn around, and it's Brian Everett standing there. He's hey brother and me, right in the middle of uh, of the Tuttle Seventy. So I went up and talked to him for a second. Super, super nice guy. He has done uh, straight up just badass work since I can remember. Um, he was one of the ones as I was coming up. I was seeing him in the magazines and thinking, man, this guy's got it going on. He does great fine line. Does great everything really. But I, I had always wanted a, a Brian Everett card uh, to kind of go with my story because somebody reminded me the other day, the only reason that you collect things is for the stories involved with them. Now, a lot of these things I get, I, I don't actually have a story. Uh, I find the story out after I get them a lot of times, but I buy them because they're historic. They're, uh, they're little pieces of history. And I love that. I love collecting history and, and figuring out these little stories. Like this East Coast Tattoo uh, Studio. It is a beautiful card. I am not that familiar with East Coast Tattoo, but I got it because it's a great looking card. And I thought, ah, I'll, uh, I'll definitely look that story up. Uh, with the Brian Everett, I already had a story. Uh, I met Brian out, at, uh, uh, out in San Francisco. And he was such a nice dude and, and like so humble uh, that I was like, man, I've, I've got to have something from him. I'm hoping to get a piece of flash to go with this. If you're out there listening, uh, Mr. Everett, uh, I would love to have something that goes with this card. I'm just saying, just saying, if you want to send something, you don't have to, but if you want to send something. So that is the first thing. And uh, Etsy, 
I mean, who thought? You know, I, I never realized that I could get on there and search for this kind of stuff and find, uh, find not only decent stuff, but really great stuff, you know? Okay, so, uh, as promised last week, this next package, it's a real special package for me. I was searching through eBay, as I normally do. I, I search through eBay a ton. And I come across something that said, Tom Spaulding's picture machine flash. And I was like, Jiminy Christmas, somebody's trying to fool somebody again. I wasn't familiar with the name Tom Spaulding, uh, but I was familiar with Picture Machine Flash. Picture Machine Flash is by uh, a guy named Pat Marty. So when I saw it, I thought, man, that is suspicious. I'm gonna dive deeper into it, and I'm glad I did. I pulled up the description, and the description was this. It said, Tom Spaulding's Picture Machine, 1977, production flash sheet number 181. Hand colored by Tom Spaulding. Hung in Tom's Albany, New York tattoo shop from 1977 to 2016. Includes all five acetate stencils cut by Tom. Condition is used with some stains. Free shipping with UPS, or USPS. Now, reading that, I was like, this, it still, it just isn't really hitting home for me yet wasn't making too much sense and then I read the rest of the description. It says after 45 years in the business I'm retiring. The flash has been an important part of my daily life but it's time to let it go. There is a lot of flash, uh, vintage flash on the market. What makes mine special is the original acetate stencils that come with it. Back in the day the stencils were important to the flash. Uh, they were the only way most tattooers could accurately reproduce the designs from the drawing on the uh, from the drawing uh, to the skin. Cutting a good stencil uh, required a lot of uh, time. My dad, Huck Spaulding, taught me that uh, that skill as well as drawing flash and tattooing it. So after reading that, I thought, okay, I just I I didn't know that uh, Huck Spaulding had uh, children that were in the industry much less than being in the industry for 45 years. Uh, I'm not from that area, so I just, I didn't know. Educating yourself on this stuff is important, just as important as anything else. So I sent, um, I sent him a message uh, once I ordered this flash, because once I knew that it was Huck Spaulding's son, it made a lot more sense. They weren't trying to fool anybody and making them think that this this man had drawn this picture machine flash, which is what I originally thought. I always jump to the worst conclusion. I don't know, it's, maybe it's my generation, maybe it's just my grumpy old butt, but I always jump to, hey, there's somebody trying to mess somebody up. And it's not always true, and in this case, it definitely was not. Um, so I went ahead and I ordered a piece of this flash, because it's iconic at this point. Huck, uh, Huck Spaulding, his dad, started Spaulding and Rogers Tattoo Supply Company in 1956, and they still, they're still running today. Um, so I sent him a message. Once I found all this out, I thought I'd better reach out to this guy. He's a generational tattooer. He's, uh, he's from a, a, a um, I don't know what you'd call it, a lineage, I guess. Uh, he's from a lineage I respect and like and collect. Uh, so I should I should probably reach out to him and see if he would send a business card. You saw in the first segment how much I love getting business cards. Um, so I sent him a message that says, brother, if you could uh, uh, include a business card with your flash, uh, that would be great. We're gonna feature you on, uh, on my YouTube channel, or my YouTube show. He sent back uh, the greatest message that we've, we've gotten here at Tattoo Collectibles so far. He sent this, it says, hi Eric, thanks for your interest in my flash. I sent it out this morning, you should get it in three to four business days. And he was right, we got it really quick. Uh, I took a look at some of your YouTube videos. I can't believe I've never seen any of them before. They're great. Thanks, thanks for, the, for that, Tom, that's awesome. It says, I especially like the one on Lyle Tuttle and his shirt. In fact, the picture shown of the guy building tattoo machines wearing the shirt is me. Lyle gave me the shirt when he came to visit Huck at SNR in 74 or 75. I wore that shirt until it was threadbare. I worked for my dad from time to time. I could work a fishing reel to wind coils and, and a file to file machines. Jobs he often gave me as punishment for pissing him off. 
From around 1974 to 1980, I built most of the machines he sold. I started tattooing by the mid 70s and my hours went from full time to part time and then not at all as my shop business grew. I was the only shop in Albany for many years. I am out of room here. I'll continue on another message. Okay. So he had uh, the, uh, eBay only lets you send so much and this is, this is all through eBay at this point. Uh, it says, anyway, I'm selling off my stuff since I'm retiring. I've got quite a bit of production flash, so I'm starting with that. So that's what this is. And I went ahead and printed both of those out. I printed out the, um, the description so I could put it with the flash. Um, chances are when I frame it, what I'll do is I'll slip that description in the back of the frame. Um, and then the correspondence, it's always good to save the correspondence. Uh, and in this case, it let me know that another collectible that I'd purchased, and I'd purchased it because it, it had a guy wearing the Lyle Tuttle shirt. And then I find out that this guy is, is Tom Spaulding, is Huck Spaulding's son. So I've got more history on another piece because I hunted down some history on this, uh, which it thrills me when stuff like that happens. So anyway, Without uh, going too much further, we are going to open this wonderful package. Now, I'm gonna be real careful and just cut the edge. I'm not sure how tightly packed this one is. All right, so. Whatever this slider out. Let's see what we got here. Packaged really nicely. So, first and foremost, Tom did send us a card, which I think is awesome. Um, this will be uh, framed up with everything else. And then this, uh, wow, this, um, th this piece of 1977 picture machine flash. This stuff is gorgeous. I cannot wait uh, to display this. I'm definitely going to put it all together. Um, Tom also sent us a, um, a nice letter. This is from, uh, from Tom Spaulding Studios. Uh, it says, thank you for your purchase. I hope you enjoy this small piece of tattoo history. This flash has been an important part of my life for many years. I am now happily passing it on for others to appreciate it. Uh, feel free to contact me. It's got uh, uh, his signature and his, uh, his dot com at the bottom there. So this is one of the reasons that I was like, I've, I've got to have this. So. It came with all of the acetates that go with, there are five acetates here, that go with the, um, uh, there's gotta be another one in there, yep. They go with all the images that were on the flash, which is awesome. Like, uh, like I told you before, these, these were uh, how they put um, the tattoos on uh, back in the day. And you could tell that some of these have been used a ton and some of them have barely been used. Like he did this panther and, and uh, dagger and this um, uh, scorpion a ton and this panther and snake a ton because they're, they're like super dark. You know, you can, you can tell that this one's been used over and over and over again. Um, whereas this one, like you can still see some of the graphite in it, but it hasn't, uh, it hasn't got a ton of it like, like jammed in there. So you can tell that, that this probably wasn't as popular as the, uh, the scorpion and the, um, the panthers. This big bird, uh, you can tell it's been done a few times, um, but again, it's, it's a pretty clean stencil. Um, so that, um, that is that. that. That is everything that was in uh, that, uh, that package. Now, I suggest going to eBay checking this out because like this is the most extensive like collection that I've gotten from eBay. Uh, everything's here. Uh, all the history, like you don't have to track. A lot of guys will buy a piece of flash and then they'll try to track down the original acetates that went with it, which it's super hard to do that. This one, you can tell that the acetates have been kept in this envelope because the envelope's kind of dog-eared and ratty. Um, you, but you could tell that this one, uh, this is the one that housed those stencils. You know, like this was in a drawer somewhere 
And when somebody would want, uh, you know, the, the bird off of this sheet, they'd go to 181 because that was the, the number of the sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to display all these together. I'm going to, I'll put the flash with his card, with all the stencils down below it, uh, or maybe around them. I'm not sure how I'm going to display it yet, but I know that I'm going to put everything uh, together. And then I'm going to go ahead and save the envelope that it all came in, and I'm going to put the correspondence that corresponds with, uh, with them in that envelope, and I'll probably put it in the back of the frame. That way I've got everything together, and um, it'll just be a, be a nice little collection there. So yeah, we'd like to thank Tom for sending all this great history. And um, for all of you out there who want a piece of this, you can absolutely get you a piece. Just go and grab, uh, grab one off of eBay. Just type in Tom Spaulding, they'll all come directly up. So, we are bringing back a segment that, uh, that we had, got, that had been missing for a, a week or two. We're gonna do a Tattoo Historian today. The Tattoo Historian today is on Greg Irons. He's one of my favorites uh, from back in the day. I own some of his flash and a couple of his cards. But this, uh, I, uh, this is a, a first-hand instance from someone uh, that knew Greg, and I thought it'd be, it'd be neat to put in there. So, check this out. Comics World, from the number seven, 1985 edition of the Tattoo Historian. Though my column originated in Wonderland in 1971, it became best known in the underground newspaper for the period, mainly in the Los Angeles Free Press and the Los Angeles staff. One of the things I was doing at the time was a series of reports on underground comics and the artists who drew them. One of these was to be Greg Irons, but that interview didn't come out well. I called Greg at his place in Stinson Beach and told him what I was doing, and he said, come on down. I drove down there from Berkeley that day, but when I got there, Irons was in a different mood than he had been on the phone. He was acting funny, and what it amounted to was that he and Tom Veach were intimidated by the idea that the Manson family was going to get him. Well, Manson and his group were in the process of going up the river for a long stretch, and I doubted if they would be into trying to get Greg for anything. But he had built them into his comic book, The Legion of Charlies, and he was having fantasies of knife-wielding women chasing his thin bones along the beach. That's what I had made the drive for, to talk about a new comic book, take some pictures, the usual. I stood around, looked at the giant barn slash hangar Greg was living and working in, and made small talk. Took a picture of Greg and Vich in a pair of brown paper bags with their weird faces drawn on them by Greg. I wouldn't use the picture, and I was rather bugged about the whole thing. I mean, Greg could have said that he didn't want to talk and spared me the horrible drive. I had heard things about Greg. He had a bit part in Tom Donahue's medicine ball caravan. He had come up to the Bay Area at the end of the 60s hoping to break into the rock scene, then decided there were too many guitar players, so he would try his hand at the art business by doing some posters for the family dog. Jackson was the art director for Chet Helms and he assigned Greg a few gigs and then turned him on to the comics, particularly to Skull. Greg did a cover and some illustrations for Tom Vietch's magazine, which led to a collaboration between them. A lot of parody horror stories followed, some of them in Skull, some of them in Slow Death Funnies. The scene was political back then, and everyone was polarized. You were either opposed to the Vietnam War and to the draft, or you were considered one of the establishment. You were hip or you were straight. And around Haight-Ashbury and Berkeley, you didn't want to be known as straight. Now, straight means you're hetero and not gay, but it didn't mean that in 1969, not to young people like Irons. A lot of guys were going to Vietnam and getting killed or turned into rice paddy junkies. Irons and Vietch did a comic about one of these guys who returns home. 
So Greg was paranoid that day in Stinson Beach. And once I knew all of the details, I understood his reticence. A few years after that, I ran into Greg in Berkeley at one of the comic stores. He was living in Albany, working on another slow death story, plugging some t-shirts he had just done, and thinking about getting seriously into tattoo art. He told me about a meeting. A lot of the best tattoo people at the convention said he was waiting on some needles and inks. He wasn't happy. He wasn't really satisfied with his life. He had not made a living with his art, and like most of the underground artists, he was still largely ignored by those who wrote about the medium. Everyone knew Crum and Shelton, but the others, well, it was difficult. Greg was thinking then that he was already in his 30s and he still hadn't made it. His career was nowhere. The comics were drying up. All of this comes out in his stories about Gregory. A couple years drifted by. I saw Irons from time to time. I knew he was tattooing. Saw him in a tattoo con in Sacramento at a couple of tattoo parlor parties. But I knew he still wasn't happy. He was tattooing and making pretty good money, but he wasn't doing the kind of body art the men he admired did. Most of the time, Greg was doing butterflies, roses, and small flowers on hips. It was money, but it was boring. And for Greg, it was on par with the coloring books he did for Bellerathon. The young man who had come to California to make his fortune, to join the rock stars, to be someone, was still on the fringe. It didn't surprise me when I'd learned that he had split up with the woman that he lived with in Albany and gone to Seattle. It did surprise me when I received a phone call in, 19, in November 1984 telling me Greg Irons was dead, that he had been hit by a bus while on tour in the Far East, where he had gone to increase his knowledge of tattoo art. Clay Gerdes, Berkeley, California, 1985. All right, so, um, like, there was some stuff in there that I didn't know about Greg. Like, I didn't, I didn't know he'd been chased by the Manson family. That was pretty cool, though. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this week's uh, episode. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. We, uh, we definitely need more subscribers on this channel. So, until next week, everybody be safe out there. Keep on collecting. Thanks for watching, and please hit the subscribe button down below, and check out these videos. We worked real hard on these too, and I think if you enjoyed this one, you'll enjoy those too.